So tomorrow is December 7th, and that is Blurred Day. Blurred Day is something that I decided to try and start on my own. It's a day where blurs like myself celebrate their blackness and their nerdiness. Whether it be listening to nerdcore hip hop, watching anime, reading comics, cosplaying, drawing something new, writing a new story, whatever is your lane of fandom. It could be binge watching a movie series, whatever the case may be on December 7th, tomorrow, do something nerdy, do something blurdy. If that's a word, is that a word? It's a word today. I have blurred day merch available at do you speak geek.com. Probably won't get in time for a blurred day tomorrow, but definitely get you some, you know, celebrate the day. Let's make this thing global, at least national. Let's celebrate our blackness and our nerdiness. And to everyone who will be celebrating tomorrow, I wish you a happy, happy Blurred Day. Ladies and gentlemen, blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks, this is Do You Speak Geek? What's going on, folks? It's your boy, Nix. Welcome to Do You Speak Geek? This is the podcast where we bring you all the latest and greatest inside of the geek realm when it comes to news and reviews. Been gone for a minute. Had to do, uh, had to take myself a little mental break, but, um, and of course the holidays as well, too. But I'm back bringing y'all the heat once again. This is episode 102. Shout out to everybody who has been rocking with us thus far. And if you are new, welcome. To do you speak geek shout out to all new subscribers and new followers shout out to all major podcast outlets including spreaker that is the home team so wherever you are listening to your podcast be sure to hit up do you speak geek and save it as a favorite do you speak geek.com the central hub for everything dysg we got blogs we got merch we got videos we got photos we got a little bit of anything and more is on the way so be sure to keep your eyes peeled for dyspeakgeek.com follow us on social media facebook at dysgfb twitter at dysg underscore tweets and instagram and tiktok at do you speak geek youtube is the only place where you can find the don and daddy show please be sure to like subscribe Hulk, smash that bell for all notifications and leave your comments. We want to know what you guys think. We just dropped the recent and final First Friday fights for 2021. So be sure to check that out. WWE versus AW. Me and Donald put together a series of matches and I don't think we disappointed. So check that out. Like the video and leave comments. Like I said, we've been gone for a hot little minute, but we are back. One pretty big story, and we'll jump into that, but let's do what we do about this time. It's been a while. Say it with me. Let's speak geek. Suit up. I want to be the very best. Talk nerdy to me. Are you ready? All right, we got reviews coming at you at Rapid Fire, Solar Ash. It may not get everything right, but its kinetic platforming and incredibly stylish presentation makes it a lot of fun to explore the open world. So check that video game out if you get a chance. West Side Story. Not everything works in Steven Spielberg's West Side Story. You know, and how could it? I mean, the 61 classic is just, it's, a, it's what it is, it's a classic. His visual translation of some of the original talent, it's kind of, it makes it a contemporary piece more than anything else. And at once rough for more dazzling it has tremendous high points and seldom overlap with its predecessor resulting in a remake that feels both hypercharged and wholly justified it's really a thing of beauty so check that out if you love west side story please check that out encounter a tense and stylish thriller film with some excellent performances but it's dragged down by a lack of focus and pointless tangents <sighs> what can you do 
Gintama, the very final. Ooh, a fitting end to a hilarious and revered anime series with equal parts heart, action, and silliness. What a way, what a way to go out. A great, great swan song. Check this one out, please. Sci-Fi's Chucky Season 1. It overcomes some structural issues in its second half to cement Child's Play as one of the most vulnerable horror franchises of all time. Me, I kind of passed on it, but for those who are big horror fans, please don't miss this one. And finally, Chorus. It gives you fun and flashy superpowers and makes its space dog out dogfight stand out. Along with its strong main characters and beautiful scenery, Chorus is definitely one to play on PC. So those are the reviews, and we get into the big story. Anime NYC and the Omnicron variant. Now, a Minnesota resident who was recently in New York City has tested positive for the Omicron variant and experienced mild symptoms. Government uh, Governor Kathy Hochul said Thursday, we do not anticipate there will be more cases, but to the extent that they are mild, we'll address them. This is not cause for alarm. Again, it was foreseen ever since it first reported out of South Africa. Salucci said at the beginning of her news conference on the state of response of COVID and the new strands threat. The person who was vaccinated said they traveled from Minnesota to New York City to attend the Anime NYC convention at the Javitas Center from November 19th, 21st. The person has been advised to isolate from others. Quote, the person developed mild symptoms on November 22nd and sought COVID-19 testing on November 24th. The person's symptoms have resolved, said the Minnesota Department of Health. It is likely that it is not an isolated case, meaning that there is ongoing community spread of the Omicron variant in NYC, said New York City health official David Chortsky wrote on Twitter. Listen, people, if you were at this event, please go get tested. I've made my own stance on it when it comes to the Omicron variant and those with the NMA NYC on the Instagram page, but I'll say it again here. Don't let any amount of PPE or vaccine say that, oh, I'm good. Go get tested. I need to know that y'all are okay. Now, let's hop into my favorite portion of the show. Y'all know the vibes. Source Wall. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Behold the Source Wall. Can you read, my son? Well, that depends. (laughs) There is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, staying the pull list this week. Inferno number three, Nimrod Strikes. Krakoa's troubles don't attack one at a time. Jonathan Hickman reunites with his Power of X collaborator R.B. Silva for the penultimate chapter of his X Swan Song. Should be a good one. Dark Knights of Steel number two, the epic high fantasy DC Universe adventure continues as a shocking assassination has the kingdoms on the brink of world war from best-selling author Tom Taylor, that's my guy, and acclaimed artist Yasmin Pruti, comes a generational high fantasy tale of good and evil within the DCU. Should be a good one as well, too. Check that one out. On the ground floor, so get number one if you haven't read, them, haven't read this one yet. Devil's Reign number one. The story that's been building for years is finally here. Wilson Fisk went from kingpin to the mayor of the biggest city in America and is going to bring his full criminal empire and political power to bear on the superheroes who call NYC home. The man who once destroyed Daredevil has set his sights on the Fantastic Four, Iron Man, Captain America, Spider-Man, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and more. And since it's Fisk, once he takes them all down, you know he's going to sign it. Crossbones, Taskmaster, Typhoid Mary, Shocker, Whiplash, Rhino, Craven. Fisk has an army of supervillains at his command, and this is just his opening salvo. For years, Fisk has waited for his time to strike, and you won't believe the aces he's got up his sleeve. Y'all, this one is going to be amazeballs. I cannot wait. Batman 89 number four. Someone's hot on Bruce Wayne's heels, out to prove his connection to Batman once and for all. Meanwhile, Harvey Dent plans his next steps for Gotham with just a simple flip of a coin. What does he have in store for Gotham? And can Batman twist probability in his favor? 
We shall see. Captain America Iron Man number one. A government agent turned higher provocateur stages a daring breakout on her way to prison, attracting the attention of both Iron Man and Captain America. When Steve and Tony realize they both have a connection to the slippery fugitive, they team up to track her down, only to discover she's not the only player on the board with big plans and sinister motives. Hmm, should be intriguing. Mighty Morphin number 14. With the destruction of Zordon's tube, the Mighty Morphin team seeks new allies to help them in the Eltarian War. But with Lord Zed at their back and the Eltarian Supreme Leader gathering his forces to launch a massive attack on the Earth, can the Rangers survive being surrounded on all sides? Who knows? World of Krypton number one, a modern telling of one of the most storied periods in comics. Krypton is a utopia admired across the universe for its achievements in science and culture, but its shining towers and regal people conceal a planet rotting at its core. When a catastrophic event befalls Krypton's natural world, it points toward a mass extinction in the making. Jor-El, head of Krypton's revered science council, embarks on a mission to save a world that may already have passed the point of no return. Shining new light on the famous characters of Krypton's past, including Jor-El, General Druzad, and even a young Kara Zor-El. World of Krypton combines action, cosmic wonder, and political intrigue in a story as much as about the world on one page or the other. Should be pretty dope. Cowboy Bebop number one, an original story set in the year 2171, the bounty hunter crew of the spaceship Bebop chase an ex-gang member who holds a vest that will give the wearer unlimited luck. Wow, give me that vest. I would love to have that. And finally, we have Lunar Room number one. Cynthia Sin Breaker used to be a lot of things. A werewolf, a mob enforcer with a powerful mage, a name feared on every street of Solar City. But now she's forcibly retired from all of those things, trying to get over her past jobs and past loves. Zack Zero is a mage with her own agenda. And right now, item number one is to hire some protection. Normally, Sin wouldn't look twice, but Zero may have the key to getting back the most important thing she ever lost, herself. Now that sounds pretty interesting. I will definitely be checking that out be sure to check out these comics and more at your local comic book store this Wednesday. Let's watch this. Watch this, y'all. Thunder. 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 Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa, dude. I am the villain of the story. All right, you couch potatoes and you bingers out there. <laughs> I haven't said that in a while. Uh, I missed you guys. So, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse sequel first look revealed. Oh my god, it was amazing. The first teaser of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part 1 has been revealed ahead of its theatrical debut on October 7th, 2022. This first look was shared on Twitter and shows Miles Morales and Gwen Stacy meeting after some time apart. We also get a glimpse of Miles fighting Spider-Man 2099 as they fall and travel through different universes. Across the Spider-Verse, we'll see Miles hoping, seem hopping between different universes, and this teaser is just a taste of what the team is looking to create. Furthermore, every dimension looks and feels radically different from all the others. They all look like they were drawn by a different artist. Spider-Man Across the, Across the Spider-Verse Part 1 features Shameik Moore as Miles Morales, Haley Steinfeld as Gwen Stacy, Spider-Gwen, Issa Rae as Spider-Woman, Oscar Isaac as Spider-Man 2099, and many others that have yet to be officially announced. This movie is going to be crazy. I cannot wait. Ooh. <laughs> and yo, whoever made that meme about Smile has been listened to the same song for the last three years. Knock it off, all right? It's a dope song, all right? Act like you don't go crazy when Sunflower come on. Knock it off, y'all. <laughs> HBO has canceled the Game of Thrones prequel. Eey. 
So HBO's first run of Game of Thrones prequel was ultimately canceled after they spent a staggering $30 million on a pilot episode. Sheesh. During an interview with James Andrew Miller in his new book, Tinderbox, HBO's ruthless pursuit of new frontiers, former Warren Media chairman Bob Greenbalt revealed what happened with the canceled Game of Thrones series. They had spent over $30 million, Jesus, I can't get over that number, on a Game of Thrones prequel pilot that was in production when I got there, he said. And when I saw a cut of it in a few months after I arrived, I said to Casey, this just doesn't work and I don't think it delivers on the promise of the original series. And he didn't disagree, which actually was a relief. As far back as 2017, a couple of different Game of Thrones prequels were said to be in development by HBO. One of them set thousands of years before the events of Game of Thrones. After the conclusion of the critically acclaimed show, however, the prequel series starring Naomi Watts was canceled. After careful consideration, we had decided not to move forward with the series with the untitled Game of Thrones prequel. We thank Jane Goldman, S.J. Clarkson, and the talented cast and crew for all of their hard work and dedication. Sheesh, man. 30 million on a pilot episode and no one's gonna see it. I mean, we might still see it. I mean, leaks happen all the time, but man, 30 million down the drain. Mm, mm, mm. Ah, well, HBO got it, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. That just hurt my heart to hear that. Anyway, let's go ahead and hop into Thumb Life. Peace, love, and video games. That's all my coffee cunk. That man is playing Galaga. All right, gamers, PlayStation is reportedly working on an Xbox Game Pass competitor. Sony is working on the competitor for the Xbox Game Pass service for PlayStation, according to a new report. Bloomberg says sources familiar with Sony's plans share details of a new service code named Spartacus, where PlayStation owners can pay a monthly fee for access to a library of modern and classic games. This is the same model used for Xbox popular Game Pass service. Documents on the project revealed three tiers for the upcoming service. The first includes the same benefits of PlayStation Plus, which require for online gaming and comes with some free games each month. A higher tier offers access to the gaming catalog like Game Pass, and a third tier which includes extended demos, game streaming, and access to a larger library that includes PS1, PS2, PS3, and PSP games. Given that backward compatibility has been popular request from PlayStation owners, Using a new service to introduce older games to the library could be an enticing move. Man, for those of you who have PS5s and this comes out, it's not a bad look. I mean, I'm already intrigued with PS2 and PSP. You're going to throw in PS1 and PS3 as well? Man, if they come out with this, I can't wait to get my hands on the PS5. <sighs> yeah, I'm still waiting. Anyways, The Matrix Awaken leaks. Now, this was supposed to be announced at the 2021 Game Awards next week. More specifically, The Matrix Awaken and Unreal Engine 5 experience has leaked online courtesy of the PSN, which uploaded The Matrix Awakens. And Unreal Engine has been back-ended as a PSN as a PS5 game. The title suggests the actual upload is some type of demo or experimental experience more than a fully-fledged game, but for now, this is just an assumption. Unfortunately, right now, details on what this is are non-existent. Everything above is everything we know about the demo, about the demo and the experience. Meanwhile, there's nothing to talk about that leak until it's actually been revealed for the Game Awards next week on December 9th. <sighs> man, leaks, man, they happen all the time. But what can you do? I mean, people want what they want. But the Matrix looks pretty. It looks pretty dope. If you go online, check it out. It's, it looks actually looks pretty good. Now, let's speak technical for a moment. Technically speaking. Your technological advancements. 1.21 gigawatts. 
Have you tried turning it off and on again? All right, people. This week's Technically Speaking is being brought to you by the phrases, Oh, hell yeah, and oh, hell nah. First, U.S. Congress bill could be used to ban console scalper bots. A group of Democrat lawyers or lawmakers have introduced a bill aimed at stopping scalpers and the bots they use from hoarding hot ticket items this holiday season and beyond, PC Mag reports. Dubbed the Stopping Grinch Bots Act, the bill was reintroduced on November 29th by Representative Paul Tonko, Senator Richard Blumenthal, Senate Majority Leader Charles Schumer, and Senator Ben Ray Lewan. Quote, at a time when families should be able to spend time with their loved ones, digital Grinch bots are forcing Americans to scour online sites in hoping of finding an affordable gift or paying exorbitant prices for a single toy. Tonka said in a press release, these bots don't just squeeze consumers, they poise a problem for small businesses, local retailers, and other entrepreneurs trying to ensure they have the best items in stock for their customers. The Stopping the Grinch Bots Act would, in writing, enforce these new rules. 1. Prohibiting manipulative technical practices that allow bad actors to use bots to circumvent control measures designed to protect real consumers. 2. Make it an illegal Federal Trade Commission violation to circumvent security measures, access control systems, or other technological control measures on a site or online service. Number 3. Make it illegal to sell or offer any product or service obtained by the described method. And finally, allow the FTC and state attorneys general to treat these abusive workarounds as prohibited, unfair, and deceptive acts or practices and take legal action against the bad actors. I am 129.3% with this. Let's go get these bots out of here death to all the scalpers so we can all get what we want for the holidays and even after let's do it and now for the hell no living robots called xenobots can now reproduce yeah so scientists who create the first living robots have revealed that the organisms known as xenobots can now reproduce according to their study Created using stem cells from the African clawed frog, the Xenopus lavatus, Le- Leavis, Xenobots are less than one millimeter wide and can move, work together as a group and even self-heal. But now, the scientists who developed them have found they can reproduce in an entirely new way, completely different from the biological reproduction of any living plant or animal. I was astounded by it, professor of biology, and director of the Allen Discovery Center of Tufts University, Michael Levin said, as reported by CNN. This new form of reproduction sees the xenobots effectively harvest loose stem cells, gathering them together into piles, which they can then mature into xenobots. Listen, Michael Levin, right? Do this for me. Jump off a cliff, a big one. And anyone who knows how to do this, you jump with him. Why do y'all insist on trying to make the future this dystopian thing? Y'all can't leave shit alone. (laughs) Come on, man. Cut this out. Skynet. Y'all ain't learned nothing from watching Terminator? Nothing from watching iRobot? Y'all ain't ain't learned nothing? (sighs) Tired of this, man tired i'm tired i'm tired of these people who just so smart they they stupid i'm so sorry i'm so sick of it jeff goldblum man shout out to you man just because you can do do something don't mean you should dang anyway i'm out of here thank you all for listening please please be sure to like this podcast subscribe to this podcast let your boy know what you think about this podcast Visit the website, doyouspeakgeek.com. Follow us on social media, so Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Check out the YouTube channel. Like and subscribe to the videos there. As always, people, live to play, play to win, win to live. 
I speak geek. Do you speak geek?